folks, Ariel over here at Finest, where today it's another one of those blustery, alternately snowing, uh, styrofoaming, that's what I call it when you get those little like styrofoam looking snowballs and raining out there. So it's a good day to do a little cooking. And what I'm going to make today is a pretty quick recipe um, of basically a, a fish chowder. Now this, uh, originally I got the idea from years ago from a recipe I'd seen on Mark's Daily Apple. Apple. I'll try to remember to link to it down below if you want that. What I'm doing is not exactly that, as you probably know if you've watched uh, cooking videos around here for any length of time, um, but I was inspired by that. Anyway, I'm going to start with chopping up an onion here and as you can see this one has been in the cupboard sprouting and that is just fine. We're still going to use it up. We're just going to put the sprouts and the rest of the onion in here. So while we chop this, let's get just a little coconut oil warming up. You can see how cold our cupboards stay because I pulled this out of the cupboard a little bit ago. And the oil is still almost too firm to scoop with a uh, a spoon. Somebody had commented that it's a very bad idea to store any kind of food in the cabinet right above the stove here because it will get way too hot. And now if it got hot up there, that would be a good point. But as you can probably see um, with our regular temperatures here and the cupboard doors on there. Um, things do not get hot up there easily at all. I think the cupboards are often in the 40 degree temperatures and if I left the doors open they would warm up but that's actually great for storing food in the cold temperatures. So that's perfect. Anyway so we're going to dice up an onion. You could use any kind of onion you like. This is, I don't know, I think it was a Walla Walla or something like that. But it's been a little bit since I talked kind of about my philosophy of, of cooking. And generally, I think if you start out with ingredients that are edible themselves, you can try putting them together in any combo. And you may or may not come up with exactly what you were picturing or the right, uh, you know, color or shape or taste or something you had in your head. But you're probably going to come up with food that's edible. And if you don't like it, then you just do something different uh, next time. So cooking is not not a hard thing to experiment with at all I don't think and um, not something to be to be scared of or nervous about it's not like if you trying to learn I don't know electrical wiring and you mess it up you could electrocute yourself or burn the house down um, there's uh, learning to cook is a fairly low risk um, activity but it is also a great way to do something I find quite enjoyable. And even if you don't, it's a great way to make more nutritious food and make it less expensively. I'm just going to put our onions in there. Soups are also, of all cooking things, I think one of the absolute easiest things to experiment with because you really can put anything in a pot and end up with a pretty delicious soup. So we're going to let those onions saute there for a minute. And um, while we're doing that, I'm actually going to go ahead and add my spices. So to season this, I'm going to do a few bay leaves. And those, if you've never used bay leaves before, are great for seasoning a food. You don't really want to eat them later. They're dried. They've got a very um, sharp crystal structure, so that's something you would pull. If anything you use bay leaves in, something you would pull back out once it's finished simmering when you eat it. Or you can lay it up right into your bowl, which is what I do, and I fish one out if I get it in my bowl. And the spices you um, use are a little optional. I'm going to do a little bit of savory. This is some, um, that one might be one I bought, because um, it doesn't really grow very well here. A little bit of marjoram, a little bit of rosemary, oh, that's why I pour it in my hands first, that's way too much. Or into the lid sometimes, a little rosemary, 
and a little oregano. And those are going to start to simmer in with the onions and oil there. And already the house is smelling just lovely. And I just want those onions to get just a little bit caramelized. While I'm doing that, I'm going to open a couple cans of just diced tomatoes. Hopefully one of these years we're going to have our own greenhouse and then I might be able to produce some of my own tomatoes and um, have our own once again. Because we live in a climate where tomatoes don't grow unless they're in a heated greenhouse. The season is not nearly long enough for that. So we're going to do add those here in just a sec. And the other thing I'm going to add is some of our homemade bone broth, which I pulled out of the, the freezer sometime earlier this morning. Not long enough ago that it's fully defrosted yet, but it's enough that I can pour it in there and it'll melt. While those onions simmer themselves clear, just put the spices back in the cover. And we can go ahead and add a little salt a while. We'll taste for flavor later, but I'm going to say we're going to start with at least a teaspoon of salt in there. The house really does smell just lovely with the smell of frying onions and all the herbs together. So it's always been something that amazed me. Sometimes I get questions um, on what do you do, uh, you know, you live in a tiny house, what do you do about cooking smells? And I've always thought that seemed like a funny question. I enjoy them. I make food that I like and I like the way it smells. Um, you know, I could turn on this fan if I wanted to, but um, I enjoy the smells. So anyway, our onions are kind of gone that like semi-transparent, translucent um, color, which tells me that they are good to go. And now we're just going to dump our bone broth in here. And again, of course, this are partially um, still frozen and so they're just going to melt in there. Let's turn the heat up good because it's going to take it a bit to melt. One of those might have been turkey and one might have been chicken. I'm um, just guessing looking at the, the colors. I don't usually label them because I pretty much use them interchangeably. We like both and use a lot of both. So now that is simmering. I kind of like to clean up as I go. And while it's doing that, we can dump our chunks of tomatoes in. And I like to use just a little bit of water to rinse the can out. It'll make excellent broth, and that way I'm getting all the tomatoey goodness. Now you can see our broth, which I'm pretty sure that one with the thick yellow layer on top was from bone broth we made from our chickens because they have that really rich, delicious, nutritious uh, yellow fat that comes from running around eating bugs and grass and all the stuff that you often don't see if you buy commercial uh, chicken in a grocery store. So in a minute that's going to all have melted and we'll get ready for the next step. And wow, that's all getting warm and melted and now the house really smells wonderful with the tomatoes as well. And you could certainly use fresh tomatoes if you have them. We are going to chop up some fish. This is some that was home vacuum sealed. And the recipe um, that I originally looked at calls for Arctic char, which you could probably guess from the name. I tend to use a combo of whatever uh, kinds of fish I have around. And as you are going to see here in a minute, we're going to put several kinds into this. 
Now this, these fillets still have the skin on. So what I do for that, cause I don't really want that in my soup is to dice it, the meat like that so that it's um, broken apart down to the skin and then just peel it off. You could do that first, but I find it just as easy to do it that way because I just need the chunks for soup. And fish skin absolutely does not um, go to waste around here. The dogs and cats both love it. If they don't get it, the chickens do. And we don't have any left after that, but if we did, the compost pile and garden would happily use it up as well. It is nice not to have little tiny uh, minced bits for this and they do kind of crumble apart some in the soup so I'm okay with starting out with fairly big chunks here but you could like everything else when you make your own food suit that to your taste make them bigger or smaller or whatever you like to do. Since I'm not throwing this fish in till the very end, I'm just going to drop it back into my broth container here so I have room to keep chopping. And this is actually a chunk of salmon. If you get this just right, fish, like many other meats, are actually easiest to cut if they're like partially frozen. Um, this might be almost perfect. You can't uh, do this well if it's too solid, but they're also easier to um, make nice clean cuts in if it's partially cold. So this is, is just perfect. Here you can kind of see how this narrow end had more fully defrosted and so it doesn't cut quite as cleanly into those blocks as the more solid end. No such thing as scraps that go to waste here. So as you can see, our icy broth has all melted. And we've got a delicious simmering pot there. Let this go about 10-15 minutes just to get all those flavors well blended. And now we're going to finish up our soup. This whole recipe is super quick. So we're going to dump our fish in, whatever kinds you might have. And give that a stir. It of course cooks in just a couple minutes. We're just going to have a very, very rich, nutritious soup here with the veggies and herbs and the good fats in coconut oil and fish and all of that. This is a delicious recipe. Now you could just leave it just like this. Well, in another two or three minutes, that fish will be fully cooked through. Um, but I like to make it creamy because I've always liked more creamy uh, chowders. So I'm going to add, you could add, you know, cream or something like that. Since we don't do a lot of dairy, I am adding a can of coconut milk for even more of those rich coconutty fats. To make sure I get all the goodness out of there. Mm. 
and that look with that beautiful, rich, creamy chowder. We can kill the heat and have a bowl. If you want to check to be sure your chunks of fish are fully done, if you pull it out and you can stick a fork in it and they just crumble apart like that, you know that it's definitely done cooking. It only takes a couple minutes, you know, very slightly on your temperature and size of your fish chunk and so on. But again, you can see when I stick the fork in that, see how all the flakes crumble apart? That's perfect. And that is how quick and easy it is to make a batch of delicious soup. Enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.